My dear brothers and sisters, in the gospel, we see two sisters who welcomed Jesus in their home. Two sisters with two different good characters, different attitudes to issues and to life. They responded to Jesus' visit in two different ways. Mary chose to welcome Jesus by sitting at his feet and listening to him speak, listen to his gracious words, while Martha chose to welcome Jesus by going about finding something for him to eat. Equally a good idea. But things kept moving fine and nobody complained. It was all right for Jesus that one person sat beside him and listened to him while the other uh, kept moving to find something good for him to eat and drink. Things appeared to change when Martha made a, a little complaint. I don't consider it a bitter complaint. It was just uh, a jovial observation. Being good sisters, uh, uh, naturally, Martha will not want to portray her sister as being uncharitable. So it, it, we don't take it to be a bitter complaint. So perhaps jovially, he came around Jesus and said, why not tell my sister to come and help me? Jesus seized the moment to give a very powerful teaching. He said, Martha, Martha, you worry and fret about so many things, and yet few are needed, indeed only one, being with Jesus, being with the Lord. It was not as if Jesus did not appreciate what Martha was doing. Indeed, Christ, throughout his teaching, made it clear that we should feed the hungry, we should take care of the needs of our neighbors, their temporal needs, and their spiritual needs as well. So if Martha was moving about thinking on how best to meet Christ's needs, I don't think she was out of place. She was doing the right thing. And as we saw in the first reading from the book of Genesis, hospitality was something uh, highly recommended in the Old Testament. Welcome the stranger, feed the hungry, clothe the naked. And we see that in... Uh, Abraham's attitude towards the strangers who were passing by. He invited them over and asked them to come in and have uh, something to eat and relax before they go on with their journey. So being uh, the daughter of Abraham, the father in faith, Martha was aware that it was good to welcome and attend to your visitors and make them feel comfortable and happy. But Jesus did not reject Martha's service. What he rejected was Martha's request. He made, she made an observation. My sister should have helped me. And then he asked Jesus, tell my sister to come and help me. So both of the sisters, both of them have uh, excellent ways of uh, welcoming Jesus. Things, uh, what Jesus didn't want from Martha is to take away from her the path she had chosen. And that's most, uh, we, uh, what we have to consider when we are looking at Christ's response. If we look at the first part and consider it 
uh, separately, we might uh, uh, think that Christ actually didn't appreciate matter service. He actually did appreciate that. But Martha wanted Mary to join her in the service, and Christ said no. If Martha had chosen to remain here and listen to my words, allow her to be. So her own part will not be taken away from her. And Christ also wanted Martha to understand that there should be uh, a scale of preference, some kind of uh, priority in our choices, in our decisions. At that moment, what mattered most was listening to Jesus. He has the words of eternal life. Jesus has his own way of treating his friends and uh, disciples. He first of all invites them to be with him, to learn from him, to get transformed. Then they are armed with the words uh, that will direct them in their lives. They become a changed person so that when you go out and begin to act and behave, you know you are acting according to God's will. So first of all, we have to be with Jesus. He called the apostles so that they be with him and then later to be sent. So the first step is to be with Christ. We encounter Christ in the scriptures. We encounter him in our fellow human being. We encounter him most especially in the Eucharist. So we have to make use of these avenues and opportunities we have at our disposal to encounter Christ, to listen to his words, get transformed, and be a changed person. And then our behavior and our acts will be in conformity with his will and the will of God. We should also listen to our neighbors because the important theme of the gospel is to develop the attitude of listening. When we listen to our neighbor and communicate well with our friends, things move on smoothly, we know it's, uh, listening is an essential ingredient of a successful relationship, successful friendship, successful marriage. A lot of things go wrong when we cease listening to each other. We have to listen to our fellow human beings, fears, worries, hopes, joys, and desires. And then also, when we do that, we get in touch, not just with our neighbor, but also with Christ, who speaks to us through our neighbors. So today, we have to ask the Lord to give us the listening ear, the docility, and the patience to listen to him encounter him in, his, uh, in the scriptures, in the holy sacraments, and also to listen to our neighbors. And from there, we cultivate friendship with the Lord and with our fellow human beings.